Welcome back! And today what we're going to do is go over the extremely important skill of reading scales. Every number that you have in science uh, was probably read against the scale. And so if you're not using the scales correctly, uh, then no matter what you do with the numbers, you're going to be wrong. So we'll talk a little bit about resolution, uh, accuracy and precision, and how to read scales correctly. Now everything we talk about today is going to be for mechanical scales uh, because Digital scales are pretty easy to figure out. I mean, you just have to read the display. So why should we care about measurement? Granted, the Hubble Space Telescope might not be an everyday example of measurement, but uh, when the lens was manufactured, it was manufactured slightly off uh, by about two micrometers. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but it, it rendered a lot of the images practically useless for their intended purposes. And... Uh, it was corrected through incredible computer slash engineering skills, um, but we really don't want to get into problems where we have to spend $8 million to correct a mistake that was essentially done because uh, there were improper measurements taken off a piece of test equipment. And so even though obviously you might not be making $8 million mistakes in here, um, what price can you really put on a good grade? Now, to read a scale correctly, what I recommend you do uh, before you start using it is to figure out its resolution. And resolution is simply how far the scale can be read, the fineness of the scale, as some people call it. The reason this is important is it helps to take a measurement knowing how far past the decimal you should be going. And so all you do is you look at the scale and you see how far the lines take you or the hash marks, and then you can read the scale one digit further. So for example, on this rather unimpressive 10 centimeter scale, the ones are clearly marked with lines, and so that means that uh, the space in between it are the tenths space. So the resolution of the scale would be eight to the tenth of a centimeter. And again, if I know that going into my measurements, I can make sure that all my measurements are one digit beyond the decimal, and that's, that's really gonna save you a lot of heartache later. So once you have the resolution, it's a piece of cake. Uh, you simply read the hash marks as far as you can go, no one's going to argue with that, but then you have to guess the gap. And that's where there's going to be a little bit of, of I guess, artistic license. Uh, you want to make sure that you try to guess the gap correctly. A common mistake is for people to always just guess the gap as a 5 and a, or a 0. And that's statistically unlikely 100% of the time. So in this case, it's between 3 and 4. So I, I would guess that gap is about 0.8. So 3.8 centimeters. If you land on one of the lines, it's a, it's a little trickier, uh, but not so much if you've already figured out the resolution. In this case, it's right on the line, uh, so I just need to fill that space up with zeros until I get to the right resolution. It's 6 point something, and in this case, it's 6.0. So again, figure out that resolution, and you're not going to really be stumped when you run into situations like this. So we can look at a couple quick examples here. We've got three common uh, items here. I think we have an iPod nano, a quarter, and a nail. The resolution on the first scale we already know, uh, and then that length is going to be about, well, it's between 7 and 8, so I said 7.7 .7 centimeters. Uh, the second scale is awful. The resolution of that is only 1 centimeter. There are no marks for 1, 2, 3, 4, and so we have to guess that. And so when you put a quarter up next there, you have to guess, is that 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters, that's it? Now, a quarter is actually about 2.45 centimeters in diameter, um, so to have to say two or three might sound really frustrating, and it is, and that's why you don't use crappy scales. Uh, and in the final situation, that's, this is your, more of your classic centimeter ruler. You've got lines for the tenths space, and so you can read to the hundredth space. So we've got 4.41 here. If you said 4.42, I'm sure that's fine. Now there are some common mistakes I see a lot. A lot of people forget to write down the units. Uh, you, you've pretty much rendered your measurement uh, useless if you don't have a unit after it. Uh, we, we call those naked numbers. Uh, please do not measure fractions off uh, metric scales. Obviously, off an English scale, uh, like inches, you'll have fractions. But uh, when, you, when we come to scientific measurements, we, we, don't, we don't do that. So please don't. <laughs> um, don't overguess the gap. Like it, with that quarter, you'd want to overguess that gap because you feel you could, but don't. So if you can only guess the tenths place, don't guess the hundredths place too. Uh, put your guesses in the right slot. This happens a lot, uh, where someone meant to say 16.5, but they write down 10.65. Now that was an extremely easy mistake to catch. 
if you go back and, and see if that number makes sense against the scale. And finally, there are some confusing scales out there. Um, like, for example, take this graduated cylinder. Now, mainly we've talked about length measurements today, but the same principles of guessing gaps hold true for any scale, whether it's volume or mass. Um, but the problem with this scale is that it's got incomplete hash marks. So you might think that since there are marks for the tenths of a milliliter, that you can guess the hundredths, but notice that there aren't marks for every tenth of a milliliter. So if you don't really know where 0.3 is, you can't really guess 0.32. So whenever I find a cylinder like this in my laboratory, I've been known to uh, secretly uh, place it in somebody else's classroom <laughs> so that I don't have to deal with, with those. So a little confession there for you. Finally, let's just differentiate between accuracy and precision. Now, most students care about this in regards to their data sets, but a lot of people also use these terms to talk about the equipment itself. Um, so you'll have to tweak uh, the definitions a little bit if you're applying this to the equipment itself versus the data, but the basic concept's the same. Accuracy is how close you are to a true value of, of a measurement, and precision is how close your data is to each other, or in terms of equipment, how consistent the results are, the repeatability of the results. And this is extremely easy to demonstrate with a classic uh, metaphor of shooting at targets. So if I am accurate and precise, all three of my shots are going to be right on target. That's obviously what we want to be striving for. Accuracy and imprecision sounds like a weird combination, but it could happen that if you take the average of your data, it is on target, but the actual data is got a little bit of spread to it. Now, I used to think that was just due to technique, but it really could be due to equipment error if it's not the same thing happening every time, if the error is, is shifting. If it's the same mistake every time, for example, if your scale is inaccurately placed on the, on the ruler, well, then you're going to keep making the same mistake every time, and that's going to lead to inaccurate and precise results. So your data is close together, but it's way off. This is very easy to catch on a bullseye, um, but it's not so easy to catch if you don't know what the true value is. So this can be an extremely devious source of error. So watch out for that. Make sure that your equipment is in good shape. And then finally, it is very easy to catch inaccurate and imprecise because your data is going to be all over the place. So the saving grace is you, you should know when this is happening. Um, so I hope that helped. Now, what do we do with measurements? Uh, now that we've taken the time to read the scale correctly, uh, we'll show you how to use those proper those numbers properly in mathematical equations, and that's called significant figures. And that's where we'll go next. So thanks for watching and have a great day.